All right. As we headed down from 18,660 feet, the highest we had ever been, we knew we had made a good choice not to go any further because the weather was ramping up and the already fierce winds were growing as the clouds started to roll in. So as we met back up with Shannon and other Tim to look for a place to camp, we knew we had made it up and off the mountain just in time. All right, we found camp, and it's a cool abandoned mine, I guess. I'm not sure what they're mining, but some of the equipment is really old. There's one piece in there from 1918, I think, from Germany. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Most of the time, we try to stay away from camping at places like this, but the wind shelter was enough to offset the threat of mice for one night. Plus, it was fun to look around. here but it looks like they had it a uh, u-joint right up to the engine spinning this yeah. that was spinning that one and then if you wow. look down in there do it in the middle oh that's cool don't breathe that stuff though yeah yeah that's crazy right. Turned out this was a sulfur mine, and the amount of old equipment from around the world here was pretty neat. There was also a little village on the hill above the mine that was abandoned, so we checked that out next. This little housing area is really creepy. There's so many dead llamas and sheep, like just strewn about. It's kind of gross, kind of creepy. Seems like there's people here occasionally, but man, the pelts of llamas are just freaking everywhere. And some of the houses have stuff inside. They don't look like they're used often, but maybe from the shepherds, and then I guess they probably just, you know, are eating the llamas. But it's still kind of gross the way they just leave them around. So, kind of creepy. Anybody want a llama race? So yeah, super creepy. Someone was kind of squatting there, I'm guessing, and just killing llamas because it's not like a butcher would butcher it and they if you're really living around here no, and you'd, you'd be using the pelts and he wasn't he was just killing them and then there's like a little grate like yeah. an old piece of metal that he was cooking over yeah 
So. And if you were doing living there, you'd, you'd dispose of the bodies if you weren't using them elsewhere, not just set them out in a giant pile of grossness. Yeah. So that's kind of creepy. But uh, don't see anybody's footprints recently. But I don't know that I'll sleep great tonight. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I have to say, cool place. Not necessarily where I'd choose to camp. Creeps me out. That little city up there is what nightmares are made of. Well, after being thoroughly creeped out, we made dinner and even got a nice clear view of the mountain between storms right before sunset. Hey, Kelsey. What? Huh. What are you doing? I'm being cold. Do I have enough layers on for you? Yep. You see our mountain? I did. Pretty cool, huh? It's crazy that we were up there. Oh, yeah, it is very crazy. I'm very glad we're not anymore. Drove right to there. Early the next morning. Getting ready to um, leave our creepy campsite. <laughs> and it just started snowing a little bit on us. Like, glad we're not going up the mountain today because it is oh, gone. Be, you can't even see it right now. It'd be a bad, bad idea to go up the mountain today, I think. Like, actually dangerous. So, definitely glad we're, uh, we did that yesterday when the weather was, well, we thought it was cold and, and uh, rough, but it was actually pretty nice, all things. Yeah, just super windy, but I'll show you now what the mountain looks like. Goodbye, mountain. And then that looks like rain, but it's snowing on us. So maybe it's snow everywhere. Look at that, that's cool. So with fingers crossed we wouldn't end up with any chunks of metal in our tires, and thankful the llama murderer didn't get us, we all set out for some much needed fuel. And man, did the weather make for some amazing views through Goose's windshield on this day. Well, with only about five miles left from where we had planned to get fuel, a uni, we came to a line of trucks stopped on the road. What we had come to know was either an accident or, more likely, a roadblock. Tim went to the front of the line and talked with some of the people in charge, and they kindly informed him we could not go through tonight, but tomorrow morning it would be over and we could get by then. So, with no hope of making it to town or fuel that night, we turned around and found a place to camp, made dinner, and enjoyed the views while waiting out the roadblock. We also discovered we had stumbled onto a back way into town that all the tour trucks were using. But there was no point in getting into town at night, so we settled in. Sun is setting. Today our plans were kind of ruined 
from roadblocks. So we didn't get into a uni. We didn't get gas. Uh, and we just camped not too far from the roadblock. And it's supposed to be over tomorrow. So we'll see if it's over tomorrow. Get gas. And uh, head on our way. We're heading towards Santa Cruz. But I think it's about 600 miles away. So it'll be a couple of days until we get there. Um, but we're much lower than we have been. So it's a little bit warmer. And... Uh, not too bad. The sun is, it's like stormy all around, so there's been tons of just beautiful clouds all day long. So, not a bad view. We just finished dinner, and uh, we'll crawl into bed pretty soon. Good night. In the morning, we retraced our steps, and to our excitement, the roadblock was indeed gone. So we headed into dreary, barren Ayuni one more time. All right. So, so roadblocks strike again. They said they were open today, and the ones that we hit yesterday are open, but they're yeah. either starting again or they're just blocking random areas. So everything in the town of Uni, where we need to get cash, we need to get gas, we need to get water, and water, food, uh, everything's closed. So we can't even do any of that. So we're heading back out, hoping that none of the roadblocks that were yesterday have started again. So Otherwise, basically, we're stuck nowhere. Yeah, it's the weekend, and so people don't have to work, and so they're they're like walking. You can see from the town center, people are walking out to the periphery road with like lunch boxes and everything and they're gonna go man the roadblocks I'm not sure if this is a roadblock or not but we see a car on the road so we got to see but they're gonna shut everything down again it sounds like for a couple of days at least until the weekend's over so right now we're just trying to get out of town before the roadblocks take effect and there's a ton of people on the outside of town asking for rides and trying to get out of the yeah. uni because you can't do anything there you buy anything so what's it's kind of sucks we're gonna go I have less than a quarter tank so we're gonna try and drive as efficiently as possible make it back to the last town we were in to the south wrong wrong direction we don't want to head get fuel as long as they still have fuel with what little money we have left yeah every penny we have we're gonna but they do take American fuel. dollars I heard really yeah so okay. we do have some American cash so hopefully so, we can get enough gas yeah and then once we get fuel we should be able to find a stream or something with water. The problem in this part of the country is all the water, all the streams are filled with sulfur and salt. So it's like, I can't filter salt water, but it should be fresh. It's just, you see literally along the streams, the white residue of salt on the sides. Yeah. And then there's tons of sulfur mining in this area. So there's also this sulfuriness to it. So I don't know if our Lifesaver Jerry can, and we don't really have service to check uh, if it can filter that. So. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a little One bit of those frustrating. Things. Yeah, I mean, last night to sort of be blocked by a roadblock, but it was near the end of the day anyways when we tend to stop and make camp. And knowing that it should all be gone the next day. Yeah. And the lady who I talked to who was like part of the roadblocks was super nice. And she goes, oh, yes, tomorrow everything will be back to normal. It'll be fine. And, you know, somebody got mad. Somebody who's the official, so the, the leader of the roadblock people, protesters, said, nope, we didn't get what we wanted from the government. So continue the roadblocks. It's the weekend. So... We have noticed that though, that when there's a roadblock or protest- Generally keeps going for it, a couple more days Yeah, at least. like they extend it because if you just do it for one day and stop, the government just kind of knows, yeah, so all the trucks are delayed by a day, not a big deal. So we don't know what we're doing. We're heading all the way back to where we just were. It sucks. And yeah. I just hope that it works out. I hope we're able to buy fuel. And we have enough water for a couple days, but we need water. And we're going to have to off-road to the town of Sucre. Now, we'll get back on roads at some point, but we're going to have to find an off-road way to head towards Sucre, Potosi, and eventually Santa Cruz. Um, all right, that's it. Yeah, frustrating. Yeah. Two hours later. All right, so we made it to the next town that hopefully has gas. And we found a bank, so Tim's in there seeing if we can get any cash out. In Bolivia, we've had a lot of trouble getting any of our uh, bank cards to work. Uh, so we'll see if he is successful or not, but if we can get that this town has a little market We can stock up on some groceries Hopefully get some gas and have some cash and then figure out where we're gonna go Because we can't go through a uni <laughs> uh, So hopefully it works out. I'll let you know Moments later All right, we got gas But they don't have diesel so Tim and Shannon need diesel. Yep. So, we don't know what to do about that, really. Um... Yeah. And with that cliffhanger, I'm signing off. 
Join us next time as we decide what to do, where to go, and more importantly, see if Shannon and other Tim will have enough diesel to get to the next fuel station out here in the middle of nowhere Bolivia. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and as always, like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. See you next time. Well, guys, if this is how I die, murdered by the llama, llama killer, then uh, you'll know what happened to me. I know the world when I'm cold. I know lost when I'm alone. I know love, yeah, when I feel it.